Hi everyone, it's uh, Matt Mulvaney here. Um, so I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about um, a coding challenge which I attended this week. Uh, and I'm going to try and recreate it and do the same in Apex. So uh, this is the coding challenge. It's been uploaded to um, to YouTube here. So I was in the audience here and it was a really good event. I've never been to a coding challenge before. Uh, and these four competitors um, were um, all seated. They had the webcam. They had uh, the same screen, it looks like, uh, and the, the uh, there was two hosts, and they did a fantastic job of um, of hosting the event. It was lots of fun, really, really good. So they were using um, a low-code framework um, to do this, and what the challenge was was to build like a World Cup um, uh, site where you could see um, the list of fixtures, and you could see... Uh, flags and it was um, there was a predictions element to it as well and you can see what groups the teams were in as well um, so you can see in the top it, they had 30 minutes to uh, create this uh, low code application and they're all really busy working really hard with um, with this application and you can see from the top I've got a timer as well so I'm going to have 30 minutes to, to build an apex application uh, to do sim similar kind of thing really uh, so I'll just run you through this so all the data, oh, here's the host, the, um, the data was provided to them. So they already had a database and they could already get started with it as, um, with existing data. For my challenge, I don't have a database, but I've found this, uh, found this um, GitHub and it's got this uh, REST API here. So I'm gonna use that. I've already signed up for a token um, and it's got these teams and it's got matches. So we're gonna use that. Okay, so back to this. Um, they all started, it looks like the 30 minutes in, they're building the application, building the database, building the uh, the data model uh, and the mapping using these data types to, to the underlying data. Um, it's almost uh, four minutes in now, um, some ahead, ahead of others. Um, while it was going on, they started to talk about um, the, the uh, uh, competitors and a bit of background about them. So that's really good. Uh, here, if I zoom on a bit, oh, you can see the application taking place now. If I if I zoom on a little bit, you can see them with the interface now uh, adding elements to the page. You see, I've got some country flags, I think, here. Uh, let's zoom on and zoom on. Ah, okay, so the very different websites. This is um, like a vertical list of, um, of teams in, in, in groups here, and they're all at various stages. Uh, you know, like I say, all these competitors are top of the game. They're either experts um, in their field. Uh, on the, um, Richard, especially on the forums, um, but the other guys also work at uh, various partners as well. And they're all um, qualified in this low-code framework. So at the end, um, two of them managed to um, to um, produce the application within the time. Other two didn't get that far because of bugs. Um, I think I might run into some bugs as well with it when I do this challenge as well, so we'll, I'll see how far I get with it. And at the end, um, uh, they were interviewing as well, so it was a, it was a really, really good event, and uh, uh, I want to do something similar. So these four tabs is what the competitors have built. So here we've seen some image. We've seen like a, a pick for the wing winner here, so I can put my name in. Submit that. Um, I've got these filters by matches, it looks like. Um, I don't see any scores on there. Uh, I've got some pagination. I can see different groups as well. So here's group E. Here's another one. This is like a dark theme here. Again, we've got more filters. We've got, got a prediction going on. Uh, oh, this, this one's really good because this has got stadium pictures. My web service doesn't have stadium information, but it's got groups. Um, so I might do this actually, group number and group letter and some values. Um, this one is purple and dark theme. I like this one. And it's got some groups and flags. It's got prediction. Uh, oh, here's the vertical list as well. This, I think it's just missed the country team off. So, um, um, you know, it's very tight time scales, but he has had this uh, dynamic region, so you can have you can pick a stadium, and it just gives you information about the stadium. I like that a lot. Shame I don't have stadium information in my web service. So um, we're going to do the same. I kind of like this. I kind of like the dark and purple. I think I might do the same on my challenge. Okay, let's get started then. So they all started on this page, and it was like a three, two, one, and go. So let's start building an application. 
Um, where shall I start? Maybe I'll start with the predictions table. Um, okay, so how do I do a table in Apex? I would use Quick SQL. That's my favorite um, place to create objects, database objects. So I call it prediction, and there was a name and a country. I think that might be it, actually. Let's just generate. Fair enough. So I'll, rather than save that as a script, I'm just going to run it in line here. So I'll paste that in. Um, the types are good for me. That's been created. Just have a quick look at that. Prediction. Yeah, so I could create an application just on that table, but um, I think I'll create it from the builder. In fact, all these pages are, there's no login to them. So I'll do the same. I'll do a um, an application without any login. It's just be an open page or a portal, as they call it, in that low code framework. Anything sporty here? Um, maybe like a team? Oh, that purple. Let's use purple because I like the purple and, and dark theme from that application. We'll call it, uh, well, Welcome to Qatar. Uh, oh, dark theme. Let's have a mega menu. I always like choosing a mega menu. Oh, that look at framework has got PWA support, so I like PWA support. About page. No authentication. Okay, we'll do that later. So hopefully, in just a few seconds, I can create an application. While it's doing that, I'll have a look at these web services. So first I want to go straight for the matches. So the matches give me, okay, I've got an authorization token. Um, I'll show you how I set that up. And here we've got response. We've got uh, a local date, home team English, and away team English. And look at that, we've got a flag as well. I like it. Right, how are we doing here? Good. Okay, so let's turn the authentication off. Let's open it on the new tab. Um, and authentication schemes. Should we change our existing one or create another one? Okay, we'll change our existing one. Call it none. And this will be no authentication. Fine. So that's our current. Right, what next? I think we should go over to our rest endpoints, end really. REST data sources. So let's create them both. Let's create um, the matches and the um, teams. Okay, so normally I pick REST, but this is from the internet, so I'll pick simple HTTP. And the example, I guess, um, this is by date. I think I just want that one, actually. Okay, uh, oh, wrong box. So that's the matches. Here we go. So I press next and it should have a little um, test to see if it can actually contact that URL. Um, so hopefully I don't hit any ACL issues. So this access control list will prevent me talking from the database to an external source. And I'm good. It looks good. So there's no pagination. I checked that out earlier. There's no, I can get a full list. Okay, authentication type is, um, so I put the, the bearer um, token in here. And I just need to type authorization uh, with my clipboard. I do have um, the token which it gives me here. Uh, okay, maybe I did something wrong here. I think I did do something wrong. Okay, so let's go back. We're running out of time. So header authorization. Let's try it again. Fingers crossed. So if it looks like data, we're, we're in business. OK, good. Let's create the uh, REST data source. And let's do the other one with Teams. So on Teams, let me see. So I like Teams because we've got the groups. So if I just get that. Um, and it will be Teams. Here's the endpoint. Get my token ready. No pagination. Um, it's HTTP header. So I type the word bearer, which is in capital B, and then put a space, and then I put the token exactly like this bearer space token. That looks like the data. We're going to create a REST data source. Now, I did notice it just took a few seconds to um, 
it took a few seconds to um, produce the data. So I'm going to create a, um, a synchronization on both of those. Um, so this is the Teams one. I want to sync it to a, a table called Teams. So if I press Save there, and this one's Matches. So let's do that one. See, I'm working in multiple tabs here just to save a bit of time. Oh, OK, never mind. So let's do one at a time. So Teams, uh, yep, let's create that table because it doesn't exist. So it will create a table that looks like that. And then if I do Save and Run, it should populate the table running. OK, let's keep that running. Don't want to lose any more time. So let's go to those data sources. So that's synchronized, cool. So let's use Matches. And let's do the same manager synchronization. Um, just give it the same name, Matches. So when I typed matches in there, it wasn't creating the table. It was saying, what do you want to sync it with? And it told me it didn't exist. Uh, so now it's created it. And now I'm going to sync it. That's going to run. I assume that's going to run fine. So um, OK, let's have a look and see what my page looks like. I don't think I need that one anymore. Oh, looking good. Looking good. No content. Uh, okay, let's start to put some content on the page. So let's go straight for that rest endpoint to see our matches data. A little bit slow today. Um, OK, create a region, matches. And then we'll go to our rest endpoint, which would be, uh, well, we'll pick a classic report first. And then our source, which one? Uh, matches. Should we use our table? Yeah, let's use our table. Post processing, I think we should be okay for now. Uh, let's see if we got that working. Hopefully, by using the synchronization table, it's going to be a little bit quicker. Yep, okay, so there's lots of stuff that I don't want on here. So, the first set of columns and anything FA and Persian date. Let's keep the scores, I think. Okay, so I want the group. I don't want that, I don't want that. Those two, okay, let's keep the score. Local date, I want, don't want that, don't want that. Don't want that, don't want that. That can go, that can go, that can go. Right, so you guys, you can go to a hidden column. Okay, so let's have the, the date. Okay, so the date first, and then maybe the group. All right, fine, do it that way. Local date group. Uh, I guess I want the team first, the home team, and then the home flag, and then the uh, maybe the score. Where's the score? Home score. And then let's do away score, and then the away team, the away flag. OK, that's good. Right, so let's tidy this up a little bit. So what was the date? Local date. OK, no time on that. So time's important because we want to kick off. So let's put the time on. Um, in OK, let's tidy that up. Let's tidy this up. So I'm just changing the label there. Right, the flag. OK, so I'm going to use a HTML expression just to render that image. Um, OK, image source equals, um, well, the, OK, I need to put the hashes around it. So put a class on it in case the uh, the flag. Uh, let's call it footy flag. I guess I need to resize it basically, and then we can do the same thing with the away flag. Make sure we get the right column this time. Um, how's that looking? Should we just let's be brave and run the page and see what it looks like. OK, saved. Oh, not bad, not bad. Not bad for a first attempt. Let's uh, stretch this, make it a little bit bigger. So I think it's over here. Yep, stretch report. Um, some of these could do with middle aligning. The flag's about the, the correct size, really. The date format's good. Group could be in the middle. Text is a bit small. 
let's let's uh, boost the size of things. So English, English. Uh, what else do we want? Boosting the group. Uh, Why well, not everything? The group and the scores. Let's try that again. Uh, score, score. Right, so I'm going to put a class on here. I'm going to use FA, FA, 2X. So that's using Font um, Apex, and it's, it's really designed for icons, but you can use it to boost the size of text as well. Yeah, it looks good. Oh, I said I want to center align some things as well. So group, scores, and flags, I think I'll center align. There we go. And then I'm going to hit this F5 button. Try again. Yes, looking good. So that's that's kind of all right. So we do the same work with groups. Um, okay, so let's create a region. We'll put it at the top. Uh, so this will be groups. Right. So that is going to be, let's do another classic report. And that will be on a... Um, a resource. In fact, let's just do it on our table this time. Why not? This will be on our because it's synced and the groups are not going to change. So it'd be nice and fast to use the sync table. So yeah, local database view parsing schema. Give that a second. Um, okay, so it's teams this time. So what have we got? We must have a group. We must have, okay, so I don't want any of that really. Let's see, I just want the groups. Let's change this to uh, oh, SQL. So it's groups and then the team in English, I guess. Okay, so I'm going to use list ag. That will comma separate them. Is it one word or two? List ag, yeah. So by comma, and then we need over, is it over? No, it's in with, within group. Uh, order by the English name again, I guess. And then I'm going to uh, group by groups, and then order by groups, because I want it in alphabetical order. And then we'll have a row number. I've got an idea for this. So row num. Uh, over, uh, let's see, row number. Um, order by this time, just the groups. My row num. Right, hopefully. Yes, first time lucky. Let's have a look at that. Save the page. Refresh. Oh, where's the groups? Oh, okay. Didn't work very well. So, what's the problem? What is the problem then? Let's refresh. Okay, so if you've got a problem here, I guess you could use the commands to see if the data looks right. Oh, maybe it was, maybe that. Maybe didn't give it a name. Um, okay, so we'll call it Teams. Before I start debugging, let's just uh, see if that fixes it. No, I didn't fix it. Okay, no data found. Oh, did it not sync, maybe? It didn't sync, okay. Let's go back and check out our um, data sync. Uh, data sources. Should be running low on time now. Ah, apparently that did sync. Synchronization just not match data profile. Ah, must have synced it to the wrong table. Okay, nice. Synchronization. Synchronize to. Okay, we've got the wrong table there. Uh, how are we going to fix this? Alter table. Let's 
Let's clear the settings. Start again. So, new table, teams this time. Save. All right, teams. Create the table. Uh, save and run. Okay, let's assume that's done. Let's change that to teams. Why? Oh, it's still running? Fine. There we go. How's this looking? That's good. Okay, so I've got this number that goes one, two, eight for the eight groups. So if I edit the page now, um, let's try and change that um, that, num that, that that letter to be a colored box. So on the groups, uh, let's have a look. Well, let me change this to Teams to start with. So my row num, I don't want to see this. For the groups, let's have a HTML expression. Right, so let's have class equals my group. Um, okay, so I want to see the group. So I will say group like that. Um, okay, so let's in fact, let's look at the help. I'm getting a bit lost here. Yeah, span class is, yeah, span class is my group and then spam. Fine, is it groups? So it's groups, there we go. So that's hidden and that should be shown. Okay, fine. So let's have a drop into the designer. Oh, in fact, I should center align that. So if we go into the code tools here, then we've got my group. Let's let's play around with the settings. So, um, okay. So let's do border, five pixels, color, uh, blue, oh, it's background color. Oh, okay, cool. Let's do some padding, uh, five pixels. That's not bad. I don't want them all blue though. So let's just take what we've got. We'll put this at um, inline um, head level. Let's take the background color out and we see if we can do something better. So something better would be the um, a, another class, I guess. So I'm gonna introduce another class here. Let's pop that up. So we've got my group, so that's for the, the padding and whatnot. And then in reference, I'm gonna use a color icon, um, well, a color class. Color and status modifiers, there we go. Just want to find out what the name is. Okay, it's so color one, two, three, four, five, up to 40, I think. So here we go. If I just put that in and then use my row num, Think we're in business. Save. How's it look? Hmm. Oh, I missed that off. Okay, I think we're in business. We need to do that predictions uh, next. Yes, looks good. That's good enough. Could do a border radius, but um, let's do another. Let's do our predictions and then I think we're finished. Create region, a sequence to prediction. Let's do this really quick. Uh, create page item, name, and another one. How do I do the second one? Page item, country. So country is a select list, and I guess I've got all oh, got teams, haven't I? Um, so it's a SQL query, select, uh, what's the name for the teams? 
it was name eng. So name eng, name eng from teams. Did that work? Okay, display and return. Yeah, that's good. And then I guess we need a button. Uh, create a button. Call it submit, which is what it's going to do anyway. Uh, hot button. So we stretch it. Yep. Stretch it. Um, fine. And then we just need a process. Let's just do a very quick um, um, PL SQL. PL SQL one. So insert into predict prediction. So we had a name and a country, I think. Yeah, and then values. It's going to help me here. P1 name, P1 country. Yes, it's good. And of course, we want to only do that when we hit this button, submit. So while that's refreshing, let's oops, select start on prediction. No predictions, uh, name, Matty, country, uh, Wales, submit. Yep, it's kind of good. Okay, so, you know, um, uh, being a little bit of a perfectionist, maybe I just want to change that around. Maybe um, I should have these as required fields. But I think um, uh, I think that's it. I think we'll, we'll keep it there and say, well, it looks kind of on on par with these kind of applications, and it was done in another low code framework. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope you enjoyed watching that. Uh, there wasn't too many bugs, uh, but uh, yeah, I hope you learned something there. So th thank you very much for watching. Okay, with the challenge now over, um, and just reflecting on the application. There's possibly a few things I would like to just tidy up. I'm just going to quickly do them now. Um, I'd like this uh, report stretched. So I'm using the quick edit and the uh, the spanner icon and then stretch the report. Look how easy that is. And that gets saved back in the designer now. There's uh, some more changes we'd like to do to make it obvious that these two are required fields. So if I use a page editor and change it from optional floating to required floating, and that's it, that's just like really simple now. So with that saved, I should be able to reload the application. It keeps the stretch, and it puts that little red uh, triangle in the corner, indicating it's a required field. I guess if I try to submit it now, it tells me about it. One thing that's missing as well is the, uh, the there's a logo as well, like an image um, from the other competitors. I didn't put that on. Uh, it'll just take seconds to put that on. In fact, I'm going to borrow this one. I'm going to use the uh, copy the image address. Just check that out. That's good enough for me. So I'm going to create a region um, just at the top to hold that image. Let's just boost that to the top. Call it a banner. It's like a banner image. It'll be a static region, but um, I don't want the frame of the region. I don't want a header, so I'm going to use blank with attributes. And then in my HTML source, just drag in that image. Image source. There we go. And then maybe, um, oh, we'll see how it looks, actually. I was going to say, well, let's put a class on. Maybe we need to rearrange the image. It could be kind of big for our application. Let's refresh that. Yeah, it is kind of big. Let's, uh, instead of a class, actually, let's just uh, do some inline values height equals, um, what's a good number? 150 pixels. OK. Save the application. Yep. Okay. Well, I could keep playing around the size, and I could use the uh, an image editor and maybe make a banner out of it, or find an appropriate banner. But I'm kind of happy with this application now. I've got the dates. Um, I've got the the matches. Um, you know, I could I could do order by the local date. Um, so now I've got the first match: Qatar versus Ecuador. Um, and Group A. Let's just check Ecuador and Qatar. Yeah. So I'm I'm happy with this. Um, 
Um, I hope you you, uh, you realised all this was um, using low code. It was mostly out of the box. There was a little bit of customization in there. It's very easy to make these type of applications in, in Apex. Uh, very easy. So I challenge you to uh, to recreate this challenge really with your own low code frameworks. Um, not the one on the video, and not Apex. You know, try something else out and see and showcase what low code can do. So if you want to find out more about Apex, go to apex.oracle.com and there's lots of education. You can have a free trial there, you can try it out. Or you can see, see some of our plugins and read some of our use cases and uh, some of the companies which we've built Apex apps for at uh, precious.com and there'll be a link at the end of the um, uh, presentation. So thank you very much again.